how on earth did we go from lines like this? What do you fear, my lady? A cage to stay behind bars until use and old age accept them. And all chance of valor has gone beyond recall or desire. To lines like this. Do you know why a ship floats and a stone cannot? Because the stone sees only downward. How did this pseudo-intellectual double talk make it through filming, editing, and compiling into a show that is somehow worth a billion dollars to make? If this was simply a one-off line in the first episode, I might have thought it a bit strange, but I probably would have let it go. There is plenty else about this show that is deserving of scrutiny besides its writing. And yet, in each episode, we are bombarded with dialogue after dialogue filled with ridiculous and nonsensical pieces of writing that had me tilting my head to the side the way a dog would do when they are confused. Such Pulitzer Prize pieces of writing include lines like, taking your trades. Or do you think we blind? No. I think you talk too much. And you smell of rotten leaves. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Come at me. There are many ways to kill an orc. But for you, I will keep it strong and simple. Stab, twist, gut. Swordsmanship is about balance rather than strength. Fight with your feet, not your arms. I could go on, but I really don't want to subject you to the painful pieces of writing anymore that you have already heard, so I'll stop there. As a writer, this show quite literally gives me fits. Tolkien was a master not only of world building, but of dialogue and storytelling. He had the incredible ability to create either the most beautiful visual pictures or evoke hope and inspiration through his dialogue, a tradition that was only enforced by Peter Jackson and company when he made his trio of multiple award-winning films. And yet these activists, these TikTok writers, these high school competition writing wannabes think that all they have to do in order to commandeer good dialogue is to put two opposite things together and suggest they are opposite, not due to the actual facts that make them so, but due to their emotional differences. So let's take a closer look at some of them. Do you know why a ship floats and a stone cannot? Because the stone sees only downward. First of all, I'm quite certain that a boat floats and a stone does not is due to the fact that the mass of water that the ship displaces is equal to the mass of the ship itself, and the amount of water that the stone displaces is less than the mass of the stone itself. But to attribute such logic to the understanding of these writers would be to call them marginally intelligent, and at this point I refuse to give them even the smallest amount of credit. Elf ships on our shore. Elf workers taking your trade. You may as well have given this guy a mega hat, and I would have thought this was someone's interpretation of a Trump rally, which it probably was, to be fair. Well, sir, the reason that Numenorians disliked elves was because they were jealous of them and their immortality. Despite the fact that Numenorians were long-lived themselves and had been given the greatest kingdom of men in the West, it still wasn't enough for them, and they envied their elvish brethren. Their pride was one of the reasons, along with the small fact that they decided to worship all other forms of evil, that was one of the reasons that their island was destroyed. Or well, do you think we blind? No. I think you talk too much, and you smell of rotten leaves. No, I don't. Yes, you do. This sort of line just caused my jaw to drop open. This dialogue between two centuries-old elves is just something that would not happen in Tolkien's works. He had such great respect for his characters and defined the elves as the Eldar, the first children of Eru Iluvatar, beings of grace and beauty and restraint and wisdom. Did any of what was just said sound like any of the above? I'll just leave it there and let you do the screaming where I can't hear you. Come at me. This specific line would sound ludicrous coming out of the mouth of any other Tolkien character, male or female, but the fact that it comes out of Galadriel's mouth is specifically what makes me wonder how many brain cells these writers had to rub together between them. I already did a whole video on how the Rings of Power Galadriel isn't Galadriel at all, so if you'd like to hear my thoughts on that, the link is in the description. There are many ways to kill an orc. But for you, I will keep it strong and simple. Stab, twist, gut. I'm fairly certain that the best way to kill an orc would be to remove its head. So why exactly aren't you teaching them how to do that, Gladriel? That is a guaranteed way of ensuring that an orc dies, especially since your technique might not work on an orc that is twice your size and might be wearing armor that would repel your blade. But cutting an orc's head off would negate that factor. Why this was brought, wasn't brought up, I do not know. And finally, here is one of my new personal favorites. Swordsmanship is about balance rather than strength. Fight with your feet, not your arms.
Is she seriously asking these trainees to fight with their feet? I don't know how talented these Numenorians are, but I think it would be a bit detrimental in a fight to be holding the hilt of a sword between your toes. I don't want to hear any nonsense about how it's just an allegory to plant your feet so you don't lose your balance in a fight, not actually about fighting with your feet. If it isn't what they meant, why say it? Tolkien himself was not a fan of allegory, and yet this show has managed to work in the most ridiculous allegories that show the collective intelligence of the show's writers, which is to say, nil. I'd also like to just point out that this line is punctuated by the fact that she slaps one of the trainees on the rear. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this. Again, not just because it was Galadriel doing it, but because had anyone in the Tolkienverse done such a thing, I would have cried BS. If Aragorn had done this to Eowyn in any of the scenes they shared together, the amount of outcry would have shaken the foundations of the earth. But apparently we're all now living in the Twilight Zone where up is down, the sky is green, water is not wet, and the floor is lava. I really can't think of anything else to say in response to some of the most truly awful pieces of dialogue that I have heard. If I have forgotten anything, please feel free to inform me about any of the other nonsensical pieces of gibberish that pass for writing in this show in the comments. We can laugh and cry about it there together. In the meantime, I have nothing further to add. Please remember that when you write, keep your pens on your pages and your heads out of the clouds. Class is now dismissed.